Well, I am quite honored and humbled. I gotta tell you a quick story. When I told my family, my wife and my children and my daughter Gabriela that I was getting an honorary degree, she immediately asked me if we had to pay for this too because we were still paying for medical school. I said, don't worry, we're good. <laughs> I would like to thank you all, President Karen Gross, the Board of Trustees, especially Ira Wagner, parents, family members, students, and my family for allowing me to share these 10 minutes. I'm gonna keep it within 10 minutes because I'm in between you and your degree right here. <laughs> to the graduates and your families, determination, resilience, excitement, admiration, mentorship, and strength are the words that come to my mind to describe your journey. My grandfather, Juan Quinones, who was born in 1907 and, and died in 1984, told me once, when the days are dark, you just have to wait until the night comes. The light from the stars will then guide you. My family and these words got me through many nights of hard work, many nights of studying to prepare for what I do today, which is brain science and brain surgery. I will share with you a poem from a young writer. The title of the poem is Sproutlings, and it goes as follows. A storm brews and lightning strikes. The tree falls onto grassy spikes. The clouds roll away and night turns to day. Then the sun shines on the tree. The days go by, the tree decays, and all life withers away. But when all hope is lost, tiny leaves sprout out, and soon sproutlings sprout. This young writer is my daughter Gabriella about a year ago when she wrote this poem for me. And this poem I love for it blends my past background as a migrant farm worker and my current role, not only as a brain surgeon and as a scientist, but most important, as someone who tries to keep hope within my reach every day for my profession. How about determination and resilience? Let me start with a patient story. I was a second year resident at the University of California, San Francisco, leading a team of trauma surgeons and brain surgeons. When I was down in the, in the emergency room, I hear the words, we got officers down, we got officers down, and I thought they're filming a reality TV show. <laughs> but no, this was real life. A high-speed chase of a dangerous suspect that resulted in a fatal death of one police officer and a second police officer rushing into the hospital, just clinging for his life. Immediately, with a team of surgeons, me leading as a mid-level resident, we took this young policeman to the operating room that night. Over the next 12 hours, we operated three times. We left it with just a small piece of bone in the middle and all kinds of things on his brain. Two years later, this young man went back to the police force and he was saving lives. From this experience, I received two things. Number one, it was a beautiful plaque that actually hangs in my office at home. And he has a quote from Vince Lombardi for all those football aficionados, and he says the following. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. The second thing that I got was a beautiful plaque an appreciation of the San Francisco Police Department and a chief of police commendation. But most important, I received a small little card, a business card. And in the back of that card, it said the following. Any courtesies you can extend to Dr. Q would be highly appreciated. <laughs> a get out of jail card. I'm sure it's gonna be handy one day. What would happen if we wouldn't take in that young man if we waited another minute or two, I asked myself that question often. It was thanks to the determination and resilience of not only this patient, 
but also the team that I was leading at that time, that we were able to save his life. And we came out triumphant from that battle. To the graduating students, you will have many, many more battles. And I'm just recapitulating what he was said about other commencement speeches already. I assure you, the only advice that I can give you is the advice that I have gotten from my own patients. You have to find the steel in your soul. That determination and resilience within you, and no matter what happens, you just got to keep moving forward. My grandfather used to tell me, don't go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and be a trailblazer. And I started believing in that at a very young age. Once a very wise man, a migrant farm worker by the name of Cesar Chavez, Cesar Chavez said the following about fear. If you are not frightened that you might fail, you'll never do the job. If you are frightened, you will work like crazy. It is not fear that matters, but it's how we respond to that fear that matters the most. How about excitement and admiration? I deal with brain cancer every day. The most devastating disease, in my opinion, cancer, attacks the most beautiful organ, the brain. My patients have taught me very important lessons, some of them about dying. But they have taught me that it's not about dying, but it is about living. To remain excited about life in the middle of a battle for your life is the most inspiring event I have personally witnessed every day in my line of work. Talk about admiration. President Gross and Ira Wagner shared some meaningful words with me and told me the following about you guys. One needs to judge our students, not on the basis of their entering qualifications, but on where they are when they leave us. Remarkable men and women ready to enter the workforce or further education. Individuals who will contribute meaningfully to our world in ways people might not have expected. Two words come to mind when I think about this type of accomplishments. Hard work. Ramon y Cajal, who won a Nobel Prize in 1906, said the following about chance. He said, chance and good luck does not come to those who want it. It comes to those who look for it. Albert Einstein said once, the world is a dangerous place, not because of people who do evil, but because of those who look and do absolutely nothing. We talk about determination, resilience, excitement, and admiration. I leave you with the last one about mentorship. I've been mentored my whole life. My own children mentor me every day, and I'm going to end up with one experience. It was a beautiful fall day around 2006, and I wake up on a beautiful Sunday morning in Baltimore, and I walk with my son, David. I turn to my son as we're walking. The leaves are falling, 7 in the morning. It's a little bit chilly. And I said, David, you are the man. He looks up to me, he's in his little tricycle. He goes, Dad, I'm not the man. I was quiet for a few seconds and I said, hey, I'm a brain surgeon. I'm gonna teach my son a lesson right now. And I said to him, David, I just want you to believe in yourself. His little tricycle again. He looks up and he says to me, Dad, I do believe in myself. I just know I'm not the man. At age five, a lesson is five. At age five, a lesson about humility and self-awareness. Regarding my wife and three children, my parents and siblings, my mentors, how can I thank them? I'm sure you feel the same way about your family. I am reminded of what Albert Einstein once said. Many things in life you count that do not really count. And many of the things that you cannot count are the things that truly do count. Therefore, 
I leave you with a few, with a few tips for your life. These are lessons that I have learned from my own mistakes, all right? There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. I crossed that line the moment that I accepted the invitation to get an honorary degree, and certainly the moment I stepped foot right here to talk in front of you to think that I can tell you something that is meaningful. We need to teach our future generations some of the key elements that will make you successful. For me, it's very simple. It's four A's. Availability, affability, ability, and accountability. Success, Winston Churchill said once, is going from failure to failure with that the loss of enthusiasm, that passion for life has to stay with you forever. Treat others the way you would like your loved ones to be treated. Cesar Chavez once said, there is no substitute for hard work, 23 or 24 hours a day, and there is no substitute for patience and acceptance. My grandfather, Juan Quinones, used to tell me, a fool with a good tool is still a fool. It's not the tool that matters. It's not the education that you have gotten by what you do with your education. We are today what we did yesterday. We will be tomorrow what we do today. Sometimes you just have to wait until the night comes then you can let the light from the stars guide you. You yourselves are stars already. Congratulations for all the wonderful work that you have done, for all your accomplishments. I am certainly humble to be here in your presence and to receive this undeserved honorary degree. Thank you very much.